talk about voltage requirements for international customers, whether they're using GICA amps or any amps. Yes, and, and not just international, but in the United States too, how to run power to an amplifier. And I'm going to get real specific on what goes on inside the power transformer of an and amplifier. And what products to use. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the, f the first thing I want to say, everybody stop saying 110, 220, please. You're driving me crazy. There's no such thing as that anymore. Okay, 110 is like a long time ago in the United States. There's no such voltage as 110. And, one, and 220 is pretty much done in Europe. They're all at 230, 240, okay? 250. Yeah, and 250 in some places. This whole talk of 110, 220, 110, 220, it leads to a lot of problems because there's no such thing as that. So when you design an amp, the, the, those, those, those voltages don't mean anything, okay? So let me explain uh, more in detail how that works, okay? Everybody knows what this is. There's a power transformer for an amplifier, okay? Or a boat anchor. Or a boat anchor. <laughs> it's very heavy. So what it all starts here, okay? So this is what we're talking about here. This is the primary of the transformer, okay? The black wires. Yeah, well, they could be any color you want, but right now they're black, okay? This is the other end, the business end of this, all right? This is the mains, okay? Okay. This circuit is another end, business end of this, all right? Now, the way a transformer works, okay, is it's simply a coil of wire, okay, and another coil of wire, and another coil of wire, and on and on and on, however many coils of wire transposing from that coil to do what? To cha transform, to transform this voltage to these voltages, right? And more and also very important is the the amperage, the current of these. Okay? That's that's very important. And that's done in the design of the size of this wire and the ratio of turns between this and this. That's all part of the transformer design. So now I'm gonna tell you that in whatever particular ramp this is, we want 120 volts here. Okay? Now that's the optimal voltage. Yeah, let's say we want, say, 340, zero, 340 here, okay? And here we want 6.3 volts from here to here, okay? For the tubes. That lights the tubes. Now, that would be this circuit. You see the size difference of the wires? These are 340 volts. These are only 6.3 volts. Why is this wire so much bigger? Much higher current, okay? So, what's going to happen if this isn't at exactly 120 volts? Um, the amp's not going to work optimally. Well, these voltages are going to change. They're not going to be what you want. So, let's say when I rectify this, right, here, I want from this number, let's say I want 340 times 1.41, times that equals 479.4 volts, okay? So, for some reason, this was my target, let's say, okay? That's why I would design the transformer to be 340, 340. These are just random numbers, but... This is formulas you would use, okay? So, and this is in a perfect world, okay? And so I'm not punching in all the formulas of a non-perfect world or how I want to design the amp's power supply, but I'm just giving you a rough idea. So in a perfect world, what, th what that means is perfect rectification, losing no voltage. We would have 479.4 volts. That's what I would have wanted, let's say here. And here I obviously want 6.3. So if I put 110 in here, because I'm in a club and ice machines are coming on and all kinds of stuff and the voltages drag way down on the wall, I don't have these voltages anymore, okay? Now, in an average piece of junk amp, who gives a shit, right? It's not a big deal. But in a highly tuned amp, you know, and if you're a really skilled player and your tone is really important to you, you, you want this right, okay? So, now say I come over here and I say, okay, well, the, the European guys want 
that word again, 220, okay? Make me an export amp, and they keep using that word 220. So, so if you tap it at 220, it's not going to do anybody any good because there's no 220 in Europe anymore. So say you tap it around here, so you're at 230, okay? Well, that's an average, again, and so at 230 from here, it would wind out in the design of the transformer to do the same exact thing here, but with 230 in, okay? Well, the same thing's going to happen there. How do you know you have exactly 230 there? You know, so that's, that's what... That's the Variac. That's where this device comes in. This is, this, this is what's called a Variac, okay? Skilled players use Variacs. This is an older one, uh, a 10-amp one. Um, it doesn't have a meter on it. The, the, the newer, fancier ones have meters on them, but I don't think they're as good. Um, so this particular Variac... You're not exempt if you live in the United States because, like I say, you, you want an optimum of 120 volts. This has a, a U.S. plug on it, okay? So you plug this in here, and you set this to where you have exactly 120 volts. So you got it marked there? Well, that's marked for a different. That's marked for the 120 volt setting here. But if you go to 140, this, has a, this will go as high as 140, okay? So what... Which it, that's a very good thing you say. So what you're going to need is some kind of meter, right? Because if you don't have a modern Variac with a meter, you're going to need some kind of meter. These I get right on Amazon, and these are really good ones because you can take these apart and then take a really expensive. Show, show the box up there so people can see. You can take a, a really expensive meter and calibrate this to the exact calibration of your expensive, you know, bench meter. So that you know it's right. So you would plug a power strip into this, okay, to run all your stuff, and you would just plug this into one of your terminals of your power strip. So and it reads out in bright blue lights. So it'll tell you what's coming out of your Yeah, so anytime you want to walk back there, you can walk back there and check on it and adjust it a little bit, you know. Um, Furman makes a box that does all that for you. They're more expensive, rack mount things, okay. Um, and if you're using vintage amps, you don't want 120. You want what it says on the back of that old amp. Okay, that's what you want. Um, but on, on most modern amps, the target is 118 to, to 120. Okay, so if you're in Europe, this isn't going to look like this. Okay, it's going to have a European cord, and it's going to be a 240 to 250 volt input. They're more expensive, and you can really mess up with them because you're trying to turn that down now. To, to 120. So if this is all the way up, and you so you're plug cutting that it amp approximately in, in half. Yeah, and you turn that amp on, you're going to smoke that amp. Okay? So you, you definitely need to be careful with that stuff. There's no doubt about it. So what's the alternative to one of these if you're not skilled with one of these? It's a step down box. Okay? Um, I, I, I suggest you use one of those if you're not skilled with one of these. Okay? And the one I suggest is the light fuse, L-I-T-E-F-U-Z-E, -E, light fuse, the 1500 or greater. Do you need 1500 watts of power to run an amp? No. But the reason why I suggest the 1500 is usually any of these brands, if they're below the 1000 or 1500, usually below the 1500, they're not considered heavy duty, the switches are cheap, and they don't have... The adjustment, they're, they're still using that word, 110, 220, which means that box just cuts in half what's coming out of your wall. It's not adjustable. It just cuts it in half. The 1,500 and greater ones, they say 110, 115, 220, and on the input, they say uh, uh, 220, 230, 240, and some of them say 250, too, and you set the switch on the back, and it automatically calibrates to whatever voltage you have. But it only gives you half of that, okay? So, so they're not adjustable to give you exactly No, so that one. amp's going to run between 110 and 120, but in Europe, pretty much places, you're going you're gonna to be between, um, you're going to wind up between 115 and 120, which is close enough, okay? Is it exact? No, but it's close enough, all right? And so you won't blow up your amp. You won't blow up your amp. It's pretty hard to do, and they have a universal output plug so that no matter what plug your country has in the wall, you can get that box to work, okay? And and they're like 89 bucks for the 1500 on on Amazon. It's not really expensive. 
a two uh, 40 volt input European Variac is expensive. They're like three hundred dollars or something. Uh, so they're they're a little more money. And you can still mess up your amp. And you can still mess up your amp. Do I suggest using one? Yeah. If you have the skill to use one, it's the best thing you can do, no matter where you are, because you can have the exact targeted voltage. Okay. But these are just some details on on uh, on voltages running the amp in any country um, and whatever. And and I don't have an export amp. My amps are all figured for 120 volts because guys in America buy my amps, they use one of these too. Any good player, I build my amps for really good players and they all know they need one of these. Okay, You need something either way. So, you know, where would I tap my transformer? Europe is all different. It's not going to be exact no matter what anyway. So You'd have to make a special transformer for each amp that you build? No, what, I, what I'd have to have is, is just a tap and, and but then, but See, that's another good question. Am I going to put a switch on my amp? No way. I would never do that. Because what if a switch is set in the wrong position and you go plugging that amp in? Because it's uh, uh, multiple output cords. And oh, you mean like to switch between European and, and U.S.? Yeah, if you have the amp set on 120 and, and the guy had a European cord with that with the same end on the amp. He could blow it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I've, I've fixed too many amps like that. I won't do that. You know, and then if I... If somebody calls and they want an amp and I have an amp ready, what, what, what's it set for? You know, they got to take the amp apart and wire it for the European one, you know? And and it's not exact anyway, and you're better off using one of these anyway. And like I say, all these guys I know have been using these for years, and they always use them anyway. So, um, Mimi uses them. Step-down box or Variac. Your choice, but don't use one of these if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Because you can create a nice light show if this is turned up too high. Like a catch on fire? Well, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just not its not something you want to use if you don't know what you're doing. Is it hard to use? No. But you got to have one with a meter, you know. And then you simply mark, put a big mark on this. These numbers are just percentage numbers. They really don't mean exactly what the voltage is. Okay. That's 100% of 140 volts. If the switch is in this position... That's 100% of 120 volts, okay? So if you put it in the 120 volt, 20 volt position and you go all the way up to 100% and you don't have 120 coming out of the wall at that moment, you don't have 120 volts. So, so that's why they have, have 100. Have a meter on it. That's why they have 140 volt position on these. So you can, if the, even if the voltage is low in the wall, you can get the exact uh -huh. voltage, okay? So again, in America, you can't really hurt the amp too bad because if it's on 140 by accident for a couple of seconds, you go, oh, shit, and turn it down. But if it was on 240... You don't got two seconds. You don't got two seconds. You've you know, blown your fuse just, or blown your ink. Yeah, it's, it's, it, that's a big, big difference there. So that's it. Variac versus step-down box. Um, step-down box is fine. No problem with it at all. You'll be within the range for the amps to sound good. Okay. Um, but if you really want accuracy, very accurate. Peace out.